This video idea was provided by Looping Productions, one of the winners of my 10,000 subscriber contest. I've written coasters from over 50 different manufacturers, and more than half of them are small or old, so it's really hard to compare their coasters. But there are a bunch of big ones that have built dozens of coasters all over the US and the world. Almost every manufacturer has their pride and joy, as well as the coasters they wish they could forget about. This is part two of my two-part series talking about my favorite and least favorite coasters from each major manufacturer. Let's start part two with the manufacturer that has made the most coasters that I've ridden, B&M. I've ridden 61 of their coasters and every coaster in the US except for Firebird, which I saw being converted into a floorless this spring, but unfortunately I did not get to ride it. So I've ridden B&Ms from LA to New England, from Chicago to San Antonio, but the best and worst B&Ms reside in the same park, Carowinds in North Carolina. The bottom of the barrel is the only B&M that made my top 20 worst coasters list the stand-up coaster Vortex. I know this was an early B&M, and everything they made prior to 1993 was pretty small, but it doesn't change how unimpressive and uncomfortable this coaster was. With just a loop and a corkscrew over its 2,040 feet of track, I had no desire to re-ride this. One ride was enough, and I don't think even a floorless conversion could save this thing. As for the best, just walk a few hundred yards down to Fury 325, the Giga Coaster with the world's tallest drop off a lift hill. This is an epic ride, extremely well-rounded, not focusing on just one trick, showcasing speed, airtime, laterals, intensity. It's just a spectacular layout and definitely my favorite B&M. Is there a B&M out there that's possibly better? Some people may think so depending on what they value. Those who love the old school intense B&Ms may opt for a coaster like Kumba at Busch Gardens Tampa, or airtime junkies may look to a coaster like Shambhala or Mako, but for my money, I think Fury is the best B&M ever made. Let's hit up some woodies and start with the defunct Custom Coasters International, or CCI. They were the go-to company for wooden coasters after the DIN Corporation dropped off the scene and were active from 1992 to 2002. I've ridden 10 of their 34 coasters, and I know that this is unpopular, but the weakest one I've ridden is the Legend at Holiday World. When it was new, I wasn't impressed with its layout and how it focused more on laterals than airtime. And now that it's getting old, despite Holiday World's best efforts, it's extremely rough, especially in a couple spots where it feels like it's trying to jackhammer the teeth right out of my head. There are other CCIs on the weaker side like New Mexico Rattler and The Boss, but I think that The Legend is my least favorite. As for the best, this is an easy one for me. Sorry Boulder Dash, you can have your golden ticket awards. I'm taking Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm any day of the week. Some people call this a GCI because of its 2016 retracking and the new Millennium Flyer trains, but I think it's a CCI because CCI designed the layout. This was my number one coaster for a long time, and it's still solidly in my top 10, and I'll always love Ghost Rider. It's also the ride that I've ridden the second most out of any coaster, just behind Twisted Colossus. I think Ghost Rider is the best CCI out there. I know that people love Cornball Express at Indiana Beach, and I'll ride that next year, but I doubt that it'll top Ghost Rider. Now let's take a look at the company that formed with many of the CCI engineers after that company's demise, the Gravity Group. They started designing coasters in 2005 and are up to 27 at this point, and sadly I've only been on six of their creations, but they've all been very fun rides. The weakest of the bunch is Wooden Warrior at Quasi. I know that Quasi is a tiny park and this coaster is the perfect fit, but I think I overhyped this in my head a little bit. I thought the airtime would be very strong, but it really wasn't. It was just okay. I would love to marathon this since it's a smooth ride and it's a lot of fun, but compared to the other Gravity Group coasters I've ridden, this is definitely the weakest. The best is no surprise, the Voyage at Holiday World. This was just their second coaster when it opened in 2006, and it's an epic ride. It tops a lot of people's lists as their overall favorite coaster. It's got height, speed, airtime, laterals, intensity, terrain, and most of all, length. This ride never ends, and it's an engineering marvel. It runs a little rough and the airtime is a little weak, which is why it's not at the top of my overall list, but it's definitely the best Gravity Group coaster I've ridden, and likely the best one ever built. 
The Jungle Trailblazer coasters in China look strong, but I doubt that they're better than the five-time Golden Ticket Award winner, The Voyage. Let's round out the wooden coaster manufacturers with Great Coasters International, or GCI. They are still the most popular wooden coaster manufacturer to this day, even with Gravity Group coming on strong. They've been building coasters since 1996, but surprisingly only have 29 coasters under their name. I've ridden 12 of these coasters, some very good and some very bad. Many people may look at their first coaster, Wildcat at Hershey Park, as their worst, but I'm actually going to look at their second coaster, Roar at Six Flags America, as the worst of the worst. This coaster is rough to the point of being headache inducing, and it doesn't have any redeeming qualities. I've ridden rougher coasters that I like more because they still pull some strong forces. This one just beats you up and meanders around its course. I think it needs to be RMC'd within the next couple years. The best I've ridden is definitely Mystic Timbers at Kings Island. GCI is known for their tight, compact layouts with lots of laterals and crossovers without much airtime. But Mystic Timbers is more of an out and back layout that still has the crossovers, but it has tons of floater airtime. None of the other GCIs I've ridden have airtime that compare to Mystic Timbers, so don't judge it until you ride it. It blew away my expectations. As good as Mystic Timbers is, I don't think it holds up to the best looking GCI in the world, which is probably Wood Coaster at Night Valley in China. It has almost 5,000 feet of track and has a wooded setting. This is one of the biggest bucket list coasters for a lot of enthusiasts. Moving back to steel coasters, let's talk about SNS Sansei. Wait, hold up. Actually, SNS makes wooden coasters too, but we'll get back to that. Since 2001, SNS has been pushing the envelope with their innovative coaster models with 38 coasters to their name worldwide, and I've ridden nine of them. Granted, six of those nines were free spins. Thank you, Six Flags. And I enjoy them, but they aren't the best or the worst of the SNS creations. SNS came on strong in 2019 with Max Force and Steel Curtain, but I haven't had the chance to ride either of those yet, so I'm stuck picking among three coasters to choose from for the best and the worst. The worst one is easy, Timberhawk Bird of Prey at Wild Waves. This wooden coaster rides pretty smooth, but it does absolutely nothing. I love wooden coasters, but this is one of the most boring large-scale woodies I've ever ridden. The drops are shallow, there's a lot of track that doesn't do anything, there's zero airtime, it's just dull. As for the best, there are two strong contenders, one being El Loco at the Adventure Dome, which is a really solid and fun ride, but I'm going to go with Powder Keg at Silver Dollar City. This former water coaster was converted into a launch coaster for the 2004 season and features a powerful launch from 0 to 53 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds and it has a really cool terrain setting equipped with big drops and even a mid-course lift tilt, which only a handful of launch coasters out there can claim. It's not a great coaster by any means, but it's unique and it's a fun experience. As for the best of the SNS coasters, I think there's little debate on this one. You gotta go with the 249-foot 4D monster at Fuji Q Highland in Japan, Aijinaika. Speaking of Japan, let's look at Togo. Yes, that Togo. They've built 61 coasters, mostly in Japan, but a handful have made it over here to the US, and I've ridden a grand total of three. Shockwave at King's Dominion, Windjammer at Knott's Berry Farm, and Manhattan Express at the New York New York Hotel and Casino. So which one is the worst? Yes, just yes. All three made my 20 worst coasters list. They're all terrible, and Manhattan Express still continues to torture its riders for $17 a ride, or $20 if you want to ride with VR goggles, which just sounds like you're inflicting torture on yourself to me. Apparently the Togos in Japan are better, and the best one may be either Bandit at your Murray Land or Fujiyama at Fuji Q Highland. Let's look at a manufacturer in a slightly more positive light, Zamperla. They've flooded the international market with over 300 coasters from kiddie coasters to high thrill coasters, and if you want to check out an amusement park run by Zamperla, Go to Coney Island in New York and check out their collection of coasters at Luna Park. Every operating coaster there is a Zamperla other than the Cyclone. I've only ridden 11 Zamperla coasters and I admit they haven't been the best of the best. But I know I've ridden the worst of the worst and that was Time Warp at Canada's Wonderland. This is Zamperla's Volaire model. and There are 9 out there and I've only ridden this one so I don't know if they're all this awful but it was one of the worst experiences I've ever had on a coaster. I will give it another try next year just to see if maybe I can brace myself better, but as of now, it's the second worst coaster I've ever ridden. The best I've ridden is probably Rage and Cajun at Six Flags America. 
This spinning mouse actually blew me away with how intense the spinning was. I've also ridden Rockstar Coaster at Fun Spot Kissimmee and Crazy Mouse at Fantasy Island, but they did not spin like Raging Cajun. It may just have been a great ride, but it was one of the highlights of my trip to Six Flags America. For a company that builds a lot of family and kiddie coasters, there isn't a lot that Zamperla can brag about, but their vertical drop Thunderbolt model looks like it has the most potential. There are a few of those out there, but the two in America reside at Oa in Alabama and Luna Park at Coney Island in Brooklyn. I admit that I skipped this when I went to Coney Island in 2015 because it didn't look like it was worth the money, but I'll break down and I'll write it again when I go back next year. I know a lot of people say it's rough, and I don't doubt them, but it would probably end up being my favorite Zamperla. Let's end this strong with three great manufacturers, starting with Gerslauer. They are approaching 100 coasters and I've gotten on 15 of them, and none of them have been bad. They specialize in beyond vertical drop coasters and spinning coasters, but they also have some great variety. Unfortunately, the worst one I've ridden is Rewind Racers at Adventure City. It's not a bad ride at all. It's meant to be a family ride and it does a great job of cramming a thrilling ride into a small space. I don't want people to think I'm ripping on this ride by saying it's the worst Gerslauer I've ridden, it just doesn't stack up with the others. As for the best, I would have said Mystery Mine at Dollywood a month ago, but now I'm going with TMNT Shellraiser at Nickelodeon Universe at the American Dream Mall. I just did a review for this new for 2019 coaster and said how blown away I was by it, ranking it high in my top 50 because of its variety of elements, including a powerful launch and the world's steepest drop along with seven inversions. It's such a well-rounded ride that everyone should put this on their bucket list. But I have no doubt that the best Gerslauer ever built resides in Germany, at a place called Hansa Park, and it's known as Der Schwer des Karnen, a 239-foot vertical drop hypercoaster whose lift and drop reside in a dark tower. If that's not enough, it even throws in some freaky surprises into the ride. This is high on my bucket list. Second to last, we have another German manufacturer, Mock Rides, with almost 150 coasters worldwide and 20 of which I've been on. For a long time, Mach was known for its wild mouse coasters, and it wasn't until recently that they really started becoming a major player on the coaster scene. Not surprisingly, it's a Mach wild mouse coaster that pulls up the rear of the Mach coasters that I've ridden. This is Coast Rider at Knott's Berry Farm. This does have a cool drop at the beginning, but it seems like the whole ride, the car is just crawling through the course, and it has those insane shin guards which makes the whole ride uncomfortable for adults. Nine of my 20 Mach Rides coasters have been Wild Mouse coasters, and this is without a doubt the worst one. I haven't really ridden a lot of outstanding Mach Rides coasters. Copperhead Strike was a bit of a letdown, but there is one that stands out for me above the rest. Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. The first extreme spinning coaster blew me away, and I wasn't expecting it to be my favorite coaster at the park. But it was, and it wasn't even a contest. From that insane vertical drop out of the station, to the launches and inversions, all while spinning, this is one of my all-time favorite coasters and I can't wait to get back to Silver Dollar City to ride it again. As great as Time Traveler is, it doesn't stack up to the best mock coaster out there. For that, you'll have to take a trip down under to Warner Brothers Movie World for DC Rivals, a hyper coaster that looks insane by itself, but if you want an extra thrill, you can pay to ride the back car and do the whole thing backwards. If you look at all the top 100 coasters in the world lists out there, DC Rivals is always in the top 10. And finally, we have my favorite manufacturer, Rocky Mountain Construction. With 19 coasters in the world, 14 of which I've been on, and as of the end of 2019, there isn't a single one in the US that I haven't ridden. All 14 of the RMCs that I've ridden are in my top 50, so they're all great, but the weakest of the bunch for me is Railblazer at California's Great America. Both of the RMC Raptors make up the bottom two RMC spots, not because they're bad rides, but just because they're super short and they are the only two RMCs that have shoulder harnesses. They still kill it with the pacing, the airtime, the intensity, even if the ride lasts less than 30 seconds. The best RMC is also my favorite overall coaster. Of course, it's Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. I don't care if it's out of style to claim this as number one. It is my number one and it's not even close. It really is the perfect coaster to me. It starts off with a 200 foot vertical drop and then it has the greatest moment on any coaster, the sustained five second ejector outward banked hill. Then it has four great inversions, and then it has an endless run of airtime hills and head choppers in the second half, and a ride that never ends and it breaks the record for having the most airtime. Sorry folks, Steel Vengeance is number one, and it's hard to believe that any coaster out there will take that away anytime soon. 
I also think that Steel Vengeance is better than any of the RMCs overseas, but I really hope to get on Zadra at Energylandia one day. So there actually is one more bonus manufacturer, and that is Skyline. They have two coasters out there, and I've ridden them both. And, dude, Skyline, just quit. These coasters are awful. And with that, the series has come to an end. If you want to see part one, click that card up above, or just wait till you'll see it pop up on the end screen. Let me know what you think of my picks for each manufacturer in the comments below, and I'll see you guys all next time.